Okay, it's a bit of a crude um, screen capture way of doing things, but it's the easiest so I can talk and explain at the same time. Uh, so if anyone doesn't know where Perth is, that's Australia land. And we are right over here. The nearest capital city is probably Adelaide, which is ages away. Um, yeah, I think apart from some place in Russia, I think Perth's the most isolated uh, town in the world. Uh, city in the world, sorry. So if we zoom in, we were today flying just here. And there's Hillary's, as I was saying. That's a nice spot. And Mindari's the other one. Uh, we can. There's a boat ramp. See, that's pretty good. They're, they're actually making this one... Um, Heaps bigger all through here. They've added a heap of, um, uh, what's the name? Uh, is that the one? No, that's not the one. Must be Ocean Reef. This one. Yeah, so they've added all that rock there and they're going to keep going this way and put a heap of restaurants and shops and stuff all along here by the sounds of it. And also they're making... There's not actually a harbour, there's nowhere to, they're all the ramps, launch and receive ramps, but I think they're going to put the actual harbour through here, so there'll be places to park your boat through there, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, in relation to the city, there's the city centre just there, Swan River, and Ocean Reef, Malalu, Hillary's, so we were just there, so yeah, not too far. Um, if I can measure it, uh, I'm using Google Earth, so I don't know how to get a distance, but it's not far, it's only about 10, 10 k's. And um, that other jet ski place I was talking about, there's no, oh, there's a couple boat ramps here, but they're not that good until you get to Frio. There's a couple in there, a couple in the river, but there's an actual proper jet ski area, so you've got the city right there, that's all your buildings. All those shadows and stuff there, that's the tall buildings. If you go over the Narrows Bridge, get off and go back and go under and go to this spot here. That's not bad, it's free parking on the weekends. And that is only for jet skis, this uh, this ramp. And then you've got a whole, it, it goes for a while actually, it's, it's probably from about there down and down. You can do whatever you want on your jet ski jumps and all sorts of freestyle freestyle area but as soon as you get out of that freestyle area um, it's unlimited speed all through here until you get to Point Walter the big sandbar so sometimes this sandbar is underwater and sometimes it's exposed so until you get to here and then as you round this it's 8 knots 16 odd 15 k's an hour or something so from there you've got to do go pretty slow and there is a I'd have to find it, but there's a police station. I think it's here. Just here, and they've got it there. There it is. So there's a boat ramp just there, and there's a cop shop right there. And they've got, um, they sit out there sometimes with uh, speed guns. So they'll get you if you're speeding. But yeah, otherwise you just keep keep it eight knots. It doesn't take that long. It probably takes half an hour to go from, yeah, it probably takes three minutes to go from there to there, doing 80, 90 k's an hour. And then at eight knots, it takes you half an hour to go there to there. And then once you're out in the ocean, you can do whatever you want. You're just not allowed to beach it on, on most of the beaches around Perth. You can't beach your ski because um, there's too many people in the water. Uh, but this is cool. This is a military base. The only way to get there is to drive all the way down here. It takes ages to get there. And then you got to go. Uh, not anyone can get there. you got to have a reason to go there. you got to go through a gatehouse. And then you can drive over. And that's where they park all the submarines and the big, big um, navy ships. It's a big navy base. They got an airport there, and then this is all. Na so from this main road that way is all navy base, and from here this way. I mean, you're not allowed on there, but they don't use any of that. Any of that. But you are allowed to beach. Uh, I think from north from here, around around there. And this place here is magic over here in summer, or any time of the year, but in summer when it's hot enough to go there, it's just full of boats. There's, there, you can see a couple there in the picture, but there's just moorings everywhere, and then heaps of people on the beach, and it's uh, the only way to get there is by boat, and um, really nice. And then even through here is very nice. 
Um, there's some people that live on their boat and they just moor up and then uh, like tomorrow there's a big storm front coming so they'll, they'll just go around this side where it's a bit more um, protected waters and then they'll go back and moor up there and yeah that's pretty cool and then you got um, these are cool to get to by jet ski or boat heap of uh, seals and actually there's another one I think there's Penguin Island you can actually walk uh, when the tide's right in the morning you can walk there it's just sand and then you got to make sure you get back before it gets too wet otherwise you're swimming back um, and there's a couple of islands down here a couple of islands there they're full of seals I think that's actually called Seal Island yeah that one's Seal Island there yeah. so you can get to them and then um, and Garden Island's pretty nice this top end I only ever go to the top end there's no point getting out here you just get told off there's cameras all around everywhere Karnak you're not allowed to get out, or you can't really, it's just all rock. And here I don't think you're allowed to, you're not allowed on there anyway, it's a protected island. A couple more little islands there, and then there's the big one that everyone comes to Perth for. Um, Rotto, Rot Nest, with the quokkas on it. That's pretty cool. And I, someone's written Rot Nest in plants there, or in trees. But, um, I mean, if you've never been there, it's pretty cool, but... Um, it's really expensive to get to um, and even as a local I've, I've only ever been there for work really I've, I've been a couple of times when I was a little kid but yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't it's actually cheaper sometimes so there's Perth there's Rottnest it's actually cheaper for us to go to Bali for a weekend uh, Indonesia where is it Bali's up here somewhere I think it's a little island anyway I can't tell you but yeah it's up there somewhere uh, could even be in here, but anyway, for us it's cheaper to go to Bali for a weekend or three nights than it is to go um, for there for the same amount of time. It's just astronomical prices over there. And when you get there, there's literally a bakery, a chicken treat, and a couple little shops. There's, there's not my oh no, a pub. The pub's actually quite nice. I think that's the pub there. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. But the accommodation's expensive. The foods are pretty expensive. But nice place if you haven't been there. If you're a tourist, I'll definitely go. These are all the accommodation chalets. No one actually lives there. Oh, there might be a couple of people that live there, but not not private residents. There, people that actually, um, you know, like the rangers or the coppers or something like that would live there. Uh, everyone else that works in the tourist centres and stuff, they go there by boat every day and back every day. Um, yeah, but it's, it's pretty nice, but it's only really that bit is the touristy bit, and then the rest is just just bush, I suppose. Uh, there's a lot of snakes on there as well, tiger snakes, which are harmful. So you got to watch them. They're not really around there, but around the back, I've seen heaps all through there. And that other island, I think it's, I can't remember. I think it's this one. Karnak Island is full of snakes. It's actually got the, got a heap of um, tiger snakes as well. And a lot of them don't have any eyes and they're actually being born without eyes now because the birds pick their eyes out. So, um, like heap of blind snakes that are poisonous so you don't yeah you want to watch out for them they'll just bite anything um but yeah Perth's pretty cool nice place to live that um that mountain range is here all through here that darker patch of green you can just see it john forest and it goes all the way all the way down so once you get up there you go up and there's a dam or mundaring weir that's not it you can see the, the amount of water uh is that it Oh, that's actually a mine. Um, where is it? There you go. Mundaring Weir. This is actually quite a nice place to go and visit. Um, there is a dam somewhere. Anyway, yeah, go and visit there if you ever come up. That's pretty cool. Nice pub up there as well. Um, that's the thing about Perth, where, wherever there's a tourist attraction, there's a pub. You get a decent meal. So, yeah, that's it. But, yeah, next time we go jet skiing, I'll, I'll bring the, the camera down and we'll take off. You can actually go there and there. It only takes about five minutes to get over here. And any tourists that have been to Elizabeth Key, you'd know how nice that is in there. I'm wondering if I can drag the little man around. Um, it's really, really cool in here. There he goes. This is pretty new for Perth in here. Okay, mate. Uh, oh, it's a nighttime shot, but yeah, you can park your um, dock your jet ski up over there. 
in the water. You come in under the bridge there and park up and there's some pretty decent coffee shops and there used to be a burger place just there, but that's gone now. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, just here, you can dock up anywhere there for two hours or something for free. Um, and that's a nice pub as well. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Go back to Northview. That's a convention centre. Um, Kings Park, if you've ever been there. Nice place to visit. You could probably spend a whole day there. That's not too bad. Uh, you can see the airport just there. It's fairly close to the city. It's only uh, in traffic, probably 15, 20 minute ride. I think there's a train now that actually goes from there to the city. Never used to be. So that's the thing about Perth. They're, they're about 15 years behind uh, the times with uh, traffic and population and stuff. They're always playing the catch up game, but they're getting there. But yeah, fairly, fairly isolated place. And that red, as soon as you start getting out there, she's hot as I've done a heap of work all through here and yeah, it's 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 cracking 40 pretty much every day even in winter through there um, and then once you start getting up this green a bit up here that's humid and hot um, so there's two temperatures up there it's like hot and hotter and up here is just a bit hot and wet and here's just hot and dry through here it's nice nice um, nice country flat as nothing much to see but there's a few things out there a heap of towns all through here is the wheat belt, so that's where they grow all the wheat. Um, all, <coughs> all these little towns pretty much only exist because the uh, the train goes through and carries the wheat, and they all converge around uh, up north here, around here, and then and then the main train line comes and picks them all up. So and down here is nice. If we ever go on holidays, it's normally normally around the south coast here. It's, Barely gets to 30 degrees down here. Like I think 30 is quite a hot day, but Albany's nice. nice. Um, that's really nice. There's um, heaps of stuff to do there. You need probably a good... If you're into, into national parks and stuff, you'd need a good week to see kind of that. And you wouldn't just go there. You'd, you'd go to like kind of up, up there. Bremen Bay's nice. Um, Denmark's really cool. That's nice. Everywhere, everywhere around here. Augusta's nice. Uh, very windy down here. I took the drone when we went there last and I didn't even get it out of the bag. It was just blowing, blowing a gar the whole time. Uh, even here's nice. We just come back from Bustleton probably three weeks ago. Um, that's nice. That's a big town though now. Look at it. Yeah, but yeah, that's nice. And that, that's only two and a half, three hours from Perth. That distance there. Albany's four hours. Where's Albany here? But you don't go that way, you go, there's a road that goes kind of directly to it called Albany Highway. So you take that and um, these are nice towns. You can actually go Albany and then Denmark, Walpole, Northcliffe, hang a right and go Manjimup, Bridgetown, Collie and back that way. Or if you want to keep going, you can go that way and go around the coast, a bit longer. Um, but otherwise, if you're just after the four, four and a half journey, you just go straight, direct that way. There's not a lot to see through there, but it'll get you to Perth a bit quicker. But yeah, that's that's a tour of Perth there. But yeah, we'll do a bit more with the drone and a bit more with the jet ski. I'll probably even bring my phone with me on the jet ski and pull up at certain places. And yeah, there's um actually that's a good thing because you can, like I said, you put in there around the Narrows Bridge. There is a co a dome coffee shop that you can park up at. Uh, right, no, that's a yacht club, just after the bridge. I think that's dome just there, so you can um. Oh no, 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 there, Deepwater Point, there's a dome just in there, so you can park on the beach here and just walk up, get a coffee. Uh, haven't been down that way, that's uh, more of a water ski area, for doing stunts and stuff on the water ski, um, but yeah, haven't been down there, normally go this way. Uh, there's another coffee shop just along here somewhere, Point Walter Reserve, so you're not, never far from a coffee shop, there's another one just in here. Uh, just to, yeah, just in here somewhere, another one around the corner. So that's what we normally do, just pull up, have a coffee, get out in here, muck around for a bit and then come back again. Two, three hours and the jet ski is plenty, you start getting a sore back and sore legs after that. Uh, well I do anyway. Especially if it's if it's windy and choppy, even in here, even though it's um, protected waters, it's just as uh, wavy as it is out in the ocean. Uh, you still can't go full speed. If it's a nice 
like today with oh, today's pretty windy so it'll be like white caps through here you, you wouldn't be able to go full speed on the jet ski you'd um you'd um yeah you'd come off big time and like i said you can't go full speed here anyway you can only do eight knots so here you can kind of do what you want uh not freestyle but you can go any speed through here and as long as you're going in a straight line uh in here's eight knots they actually land a um you got to be careful they land a seaplane just in here and he parks up just there and does uh scenic tours i think only on the weekend anyway but yeah you got to be careful if you're going in there because sometimes we use this this boat ramp uh where is it that one we use that one as well park here bit quieter if it's busy at the other one we come here and um yeah so you got to be careful if you're going that way yeah, if you hear a plane um and it's getting louder just you got to you got to move it's not very deep through here there's channels but it's only about a meter deep most of the time through here here it gets a bit deeper it's about uh six seven ten meters through here and then through here um, this is called Blackwall Reach. It's really deep. It's about 15, 20 metres deep, just through that bit. And then it comes shallow again, and then it just, yeah, turns into... What do I do there? There you go. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, I'll leave it there. This video's probably getting a bit too long, um, and I can do another one next time. Catch you later.